I'm John Hadigan. I'm the author and creator of a new YouTube channel dedicated to mixed martial arts. Would you be interested in the possibility of a matchup between Tom Aspinall and Alex Pereira? We know that John Jones and Stipe, Stipe Miocic are scheduled to fight for the World Heavyweight Championship, the World UFC Heavyweight Championship. And we don't know with certainty that the winner um, will decide to stay in the sport. It's possible that both of them will decide to retire. That means that the only champion we have is Aspinall, the interim champion. So this is Aspinall on the left. This is Pereira on the right. Now imagine that there was um, a successful matching between the two of them, uh, scheduled to decide who the world heavyweight champion is. Let's have a look and see what the details are. So we're thinking in terms of a UFC, we don't know the designated number yet, but just imagine that it's been cast in uh, bronze by um, Dana White. All right, we're gonna look at um, Tom Aspinall's record. We have 18 fights, we have 15 victories and three losses. Okay, let's deal with the losses. In 2022, July, he lost to Curtis Bell Blades in actual fact, he injured himself. He was injured by um, a knee kick and uh, Blades was reckoned to be the winner on a TKO. Earlier in his career, his um, fourth match, he lost to Stuart Austin uh, in the under the Bama uh, flag. And then uh, he lost his sixth fight to Lucas Parabiak under the Bama flag. Now, in actual fact, we can really discount this victory, this de defeat to Blades, and we could say the earlier defeats were a very early pre-UFC Tom. So um, in terms of UFC, Tom has really only lost on one occasion to Blades. Now, he has since um, rerun that contest, and he won very easily. So we could actually say, in actual fact, in real terms, he's undefeated as a UFC fighter. Uh, the interesting thing about Tom is the speed with which he finishes his opponents. He has a very, very low cage time. He's in the cage very few minutes. So let's examine his fighting style. We can think in terms of his strengths, his weaknesses. Well, he's a very a good striker because he has a strong boxing background. He is a proficient grappler because his father is a jiu-jitsu coach and wrestling coach. So he's very technically uh, able as a jiu-jitsu and wrestler. He has extraordinary movement for a heavyweight. He moves with the agility and the speed of a much lighter weight class individual. His strengths, speed and agility, his movement is exceptional. Technical proficiency, he has a combination of striking and grappling skills. Finishing ability, he has a high finishing rate with most of his wins coming by knockout or submission. Uh, he has significant knockout power. His weaknesses, well, he's injury prone. There are two or three occasions when he's actually uh, suffered with injuries, not only the TKO against uh, Curtis Blades. As a relatively new heavyweight, um, someone who hasn't spent too much time in the octagon, you could say that he's relatively inexperienced. Uh, he has defensive vulnerabilities. Uh, his defense has been tested, particularly by the high level strikers. Now let's have a look at Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira is like Tom Aspinall, a formidable foe. Now um, he has a couple of losses uh, as a mixed martial artist. He was of course a world champion kickboxer where he twice defeated Israel Adesanya. He lost his first um, MMA contest to Kuamel Otoni. Um, and then um, after several extraordinary victories, including his USC number two fight against Israel Adesanya, he won the world championship. Unfortunately, in the return, um, Israel Adesanya beat him, knocked him out and reclaimed his world middleweight champion. The important thing to note about um, Pereira and Adesanya is they're both world-class mixed martial artists. So it's no big deal for Pereira to, to say he was beaten by Adesanya. It's no big deal for Adesanya to say he was beaten by Pereira. They're both world-class 
uh, mixed martial artists. So Israel Adesanya um, regained the championship. Um, Alex Pereira, instead of going for a, another rematch against uh, Israel Adesanya, decided to move up to light heavyweight. He defeated the Polish Jan Blankovic. Jan Blankovic. He um, beat the um, Czechoslovakian Jiri Prokaska. He then beat the he won the world champ championship by beating uh, Jiri Prokaska. He then defended it by beating Jamal Hill. Then he defended it again by beating Prokaska, and then he, recently he uh, defended it again by beating Roundtree. So he's a very active champion. If we look, he has fought three times in 24, April, June, and October of 24. Let's look at his style, his weaknesses, his strengths. Okay, fighting style. Well, he's renowned for his powerful and precise striking. He knows how to seamlessly transition from kickboxing skills into MMA. Uh, he often keeps his hand lo hands low. That can have the great advantage of being really deceptive in terms of um, his opponents don't read that too well. He's effective in the clinch. While he's primarily a striker, he does have a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and basic wrestling skills are really up to standard. Strengths, well, his great strength is knockout power. Um, technical precision, his striking with upper and lower limbs is not only powerful, but also precise. He has enormous accuracy. He brings a wealth of experience to the octagon, obviously from his um, kickboxing days. He's a ruthless finisher. Weaknesses? Well, I said that the lower hand position can be a real advantage to um, Alex. It can also be uh, an area where he's vulnerable, particularly with a very highly skilled striker like um, Israel Adesanya. Ground game? Well, his trainers and his um, you know training buddies, they say that his grappling skills are really much better. But I think it's true to say he's less, less comfortable on the ground than he is with regard to his striking. We don't know how disadvantaged he is on the ground, but let's say that he's such a proficient striker, he's less uh, adept and capable on the ground. Now, clinch defense, he's okay offensively in terms of the clinch, but he can be a vulnerable to those um, MMA artists, practitioners, who are very, very skilled in the, in the, in the clinch.